Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning. Viewers, morning. welcome back this morning to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. We're chatting this morning with Alan Morrison, who is the organizing committee member, along with Garth Nichols, another organizing uh, organizing committee member. And this morning, the topic is the prelude to Paradise, the sporting event. They'll tell us so much more about it. I believe that there is another story to tell here. Everybody's got a story. and um, We want to hear your story this morning. Um, let's talk about the prelude to Paradise, the sporting event. Uh, let's get into things. First of all, is this the first of its kind? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, it is the first of its kind, and we are hoping to have it continue going forward as years progress. All right. We want to we wanna know what it's about and what prompted it. So let's start with what the event is all about, and then we get into to the mind. So the Prelude to Paradise is a collaborative event hosted mm -hmm. by the Kaizen Panthers Athletic Club, uh, the RSS Phoenix Youth and Sports Club, and the Run Tobago, which is a non-profit organization. The event is going to highlight some of our sporting talent on the island from the age groups of under nine straight to the senior category. And it's called Prelude to Paradise as a catchment for Paradise Challenge, which happens in May, on May the 28th this year. So before we get to Paradise Challenge, which is a one-day event in May, we have the mm -hmm. Prelude to Paradise to give persons an idea of some of the persons that they can expect to see in addition to other athletes who will be coming in from abroad to compete at Paradise Challenge 2023. All right. What prompted this? This is the part, viewers, because there's a story to tell. Uh, what, what prompted this? God, tell us what prompted this. Morning, morning, everyone. Morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain in detail what really prompted this, but I think there is a great need for the development of track and field and the continual development of track and field in Tobago. And for years, I have been um, chatting with clubs, uh, trying to get them to come together mm -hmm. to form an event that would assist the development of track and field, to showcase the talent of track and field on the island. We have been doing it through the, under the entry years with their development meets and their track and field series and so on. But I think it was important that clubs come together and challenge each other right. to raise the standard, raise the bar of track and field in Tobago. And, of course, with the expertise that myself and Mr. Morrison, we have developed over the years under the Tobago Athletic Committee, we would have actually decided that we would come together to assist each other, assist other clubs mm -hmm. in terms of development of the athletes as well as development of track and field in Tobago. Now, and I, I love what it is I'm hearing. The, t t talk a little bit here about the importance of competition. I know there's some persons who, who do not believe that it should be, even from a preschool level, because they have sports at the early childhood education level, and they try not to get the children to compete. But, but our world is very different. The world is about competition. It's about who's better than who. Um, but t talk to us a little bit here about the, you know, the purpose of competition in one's life. And, you know, the having sport... Uh, well, team against team. So the, the competition is very important because it allows persons to be able to gauge their progress. It, it can be used as a benchmark. Right. So for us in track and field, it is going to be very important for the athletes as they progress through the training season to be able to, for coaches to have an idea as to where they are in their program. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had many events as we would have usually had because we would have had the TAC, which would have collaborated with the entries to actually have two to three events prior to the character trials. Right. This year, there was a kind of a shift away from that. So we took it upon ourselves to actually get it done because it would have cost a significant amount of money for each of the clubs involved to take 20, 30 at least to train that, $400 a ticket, $800 accommodation, meals and transport, when you could really just pool the resources and actually have an event that gives you the same environment and affordability for competition to occur and get the same result. So it's all happening in Tobago, amongst Tobago. Well, clubs are also invited from Trinidad, right. but the intent was to allow the athletes that are based here to forego the extra financial burden of having to travel to Trinidad. 
Now, we would have scheduled, we were scheduled to have another event in January, but that had to be canceled due to the unavailability of the stadium. So, hence, we were left with this one, which is two weeks prior to the Carifta Trials, which will be held in Tobago. So, it kind of is like a dress rehearsal for the athletes to gauge with five training sessions to go what they can expect at the Carifta Trials. All right, let's talk about the club. How many, how many clubs are involved in this, in this challenge, this, this, this first? So the challenge is open to any club that wants to compete, right. but in terms of the organization of it, it's going to be two clubs and a nonprofit organization that really came together to make this happen. To, to do the organizing of, of the, event. the event. Yes. Right. But in terms of the number of clubs. So we will get a final count on that by later tonight because mm -hmm. the entry is closed today. But so far we have had um, five clubs from Trinidad who right. have expressed interest that would have already registered their athletes to come to the event because they also have the same problem as the stadium in Trinidad is going to be closed after the Carnival event for repairs to the Commonwealth Youth Games. So athletes still need that extra opportunity to actually try to qualify for the character Games through attaining a standard and coming to the character Games. So that is also something that we try to assist with providing an opportunity for athletes to have. All right, and I hear what you're saying. No, I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm just asking the question here with regards the, the timing of this event and carnival. How, I mean, how are athletes expected to train? Um, how are athletes expected to train if there is no stadium? What, what what's happening? So. Which, which one of these? Because currently we still train at the Dwight York. We still train, but you yes. did indicate that though the teams and the clubs in Trinidad are facing the same problem yeah. with the, the stadiums being yes. closed yes. Uh, just after Carnival when this is all preparation time for mm -hmm. the Carifta Games. So, so I know a couple of the coaches have resorted to finding alternative um, venues and uh, some still have the other stadia available, but the Hazy Crawford is the one that is not going to be available to them during this particular period. Well, from now until the end of May, June. Wow, okay. All right, so let's, get a, let's, let's go a little bit deeper into the, 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 the event uh, and what it actually entails. In terms right. So the, it's a two-day event right. that starts at 2 p.m. on both days. Mm -hmm. um, it's $60 for a meet pass. The meet pass guarantees you entry for both days. Now, if you decide to pay at the gate, it's going to be $40 per day. Right. So it's actually advantageous to actually have the meat pass for persons who are interested in being there for two days. Um, there's going to be heats and finals, so more of the senior events. The junior events will be time finals. And we have a challenge showdown, which is supposed to take place between uh, two Olympians who are really going to be competing in their specialty events for the first time in Tobago in over five to six years. That is Akani Hislop and uh, Andueli Wright. Um, Akani would have been the, a part of the 4 by one team at the Commonwealth Games that mm -hmm. got the silver medal. And, and, and Dwayne was also at the Commonwealth Games, but he's also the national outdoor record holder. So we are looking for that anticipated showdown on day one. And day two, we're going to see a couple more persons involved, which would be Imani, um, Kimani, and Andwili, both who are champions in their own respect with Imani being considered number five in the world last year. We currently also have our two record holders in the shot put men and discuss women, Lalini Grant, national junior record holder, which she attained last year at the Dwight York Stadium as well. And Akeem Stewart, who would have broken the national record at Paradise Challenge last year. So we expect it to be a very action-packed event. And we are looking forward to having as much persons there to really lend their support to the development of the talent that we have. We also have some junior athletes who will be on show and who are also seeking to attain character standards. So we're looking forward to a very fun evening that allows persons to understand, you know, the kind of intensity that we have and the talent that we have to display in Tobago. All right, question. Uh, maybe Gav can, can answer, Mr. Nichols can, can respond to this. Why the term um, prelude to paradise? Why, why, where did, where did the, the name come from, where, the, the event name? What's up with us? <laughs> It's a very catchy name. And, um, you know, when I saw that, I wasn't thinking sport. I was thinking fat. But, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> it is actually a build-up to the Paradise Challenge. All right? So this is a prelude. It is a build-up. It's, it's actually leading into 
the Paradise Challenge. It's a preparation that gets persons in a certain aspect, a certain development range mm -hmm. that would allow them to compete. Because remember, the Paradise Challenge, if not, is the premier event in Tobago for track and field. We saw that last year. We saw the action that took place there. So it's actually a build-up where athletes can make their way, so, so to speak. So it's just a glimpse of what to expect in the Paradise Challenge. We got it. We got it. And remind us of the dates here again. February the 25th and 26th, mm -hmm. 2 p.m. start time on both days. Expected to be finished by 7.30, 7 p.m. on both days. Also, before um, I forget, we have a feature event on day two, which is going to be a fitness challenge. And that is in collaboration with Mr. Lyndon Backus, Downtown Fitness, and a couple other persons that we are going to provide persons with the opportunity to really have an idea as to how we can merge different sporting disciplines all into one to create a, a wholesome entertainment event in the area of sport. And is this, is, would this fitness challenge be open to the public? Well, at, be... at this time, it would not be, but we are hoping that by the time we get to Paradise Challenge, we would have a build-up where the cream of the crop of the fitness challenges that are going to happen during mm -hmm. that period will be at Paradise Challenge to let persons understand their um, true potential, talent, and expertise. Hence the name Prelude to Paradise. Hence the name. Got it. We got it. We got it loud and clear. Um, gentlemen, any other bits of information uh, for viewers this morning? Um, we've got the date. We've got the starting time. And this is also for persons to come on out and support. Yes, yes because this is also seen as a fundraiser event for the clubs involved, um, seeing that we would need to get the necessary funding for the athletes to participate at the championships in Trinidad that are later down in the year. And we are about getting um, corporate TNT and uh, getting the crowdfunding going in terms of participation from members of the public because at the end of the day, sports is our business. These are our athletes, our children. We always want to uh, you know, jump on the bandwagon after they have gotten there, but we are, really need to be in the process of getting them there. So we're looking forward to persons coming and entertaining themselves and enjoying what we have to offer. And you continue to fight, gentlemen, you continue to fight the good fight to ensure that Tobago's athletes get their just due. Yes. yes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we can see some, we can see some, uh, some great things happening in the area of sport really soon. Really great things happening in the area of sport here in Tobago. So again, I want to thank you guys for being on the program with us this morning. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure being here. It's a All pleasure right. being here. Always happy, always happy to have you. And it's happening on the 25th and, 20th, and 26th, 26th at the Dwight York Stadium. That's right. And give us the name again. Prelude, Prelude to Paradise. Paradise. Be there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, viewers, we're going to leave it there certainly for today. And we want to thank all of you for joining us today. Tomorrow is Friday and we are heading down to Lost. It's fantastic Friday. Uh, we've got our Extempo competition on. Our reigning, our reigning Extempo champ, Marlon Calendar, is going to be defending his crown. Maybe, viewers, maybe this year of all years, you will have an opportunity to see the mighty Paco in action. Yes, that's his name, Anton Parks, the mighty Paco. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know. See, Alan, Alan is shocked. I saw, I saw that, yeah. You may have a chance to see the mighty Paco in action, taking on, taking on the reigning champ, Marlon Calendar. You never know. So we've got quite an exciting program uh, for you tomorrow. You may even see Julian Ski trying a thing or two. You never know. All right, so we want to say have a great day. We've got GMT coming up with Chanel Felix in just a little bit. Uh, so we invite you to stay on with us here at Tobago Updates. Continue viewing and we will see you tomorrow. So blessings to you. Be safe, Tobago. Bye-bye.